Hey guys, it's Sarah, aka the Wine Loving Bookworm, and welcome to my very first video. So what I'm going to do here is tell you about a book I read and drink wine. Those are my two favorite things. You can look over here. All those books right there are books I haven't even read yet. And that's not all of them. I have books in drawers, I have books around the house, and then I have series of bookcases of books I've already read. So I like books, I like drinking wine, the idea was born. It was actually my husband's idea, so I gotta give him credit. So tonight, I will be drinking Cavett Pinot Grigio, that one. It is actually my mom's favorite wine. It's pretty reasonably priced. It's a good wine. What more can you ask for, right? Also, I am drinking it out of my new favorite glass. It says, I like long romantic walks down every aisle at Target. And my coworker got it for me for my birthday, which was about a week ago. Um, and that is just fabulous because I love Target. I love wine, so she knows me well, obviously. So let's talk about the book. This is the book I read. It's called Killers of the Flower Moon, um, and it's by David Graham. He is a journalist. He wrote for The Hill, The New Republic, and I think currently is a staff writer for The New York Times. He might not need to do that anymore after becoming so successful, um, but I think that's what it said. It's nonfiction. Um, this was my book club choice. So I belong to a book club here in Mount Dora, Florida. Um, I don't really like nonfiction. I would not have picked this book up otherwise. I actually didn't know it was nonfiction when I started reading it and I read a couple pages and I thought, oh gosh, I'm gonna hate this book. But I loved it. So there's that. If you're not really a big nonfiction reader, you might like it too. Um, okay, so basically the plot of this book it's about, it's a true story about the Osage Indian tribe in Oklahoma, and I meant to look this up before I started the video, and I forgot. Oklahoma has something to do with Native Americans. It means something in a Native American language about them, because um, basically that's where the government kind of tried to funnel all the tribes. Um, so I thought that was an interesting bit of trivia. The Osage tribe lived in Oklahoma, and the land they had, the American government wanted. So they basically pushed them into what they deemed less desirable land. I think it was like rocky, um, whatever. They, they thought it was less desirable. So of course we should push the Native Americans there. Um, actually the land had oil under it and a lot of oil. So that was kind of karma for the American government. So they ended up becoming very rich by selling oil leases on their land. And this was in the 20s. And so the equivalents were like millions of dollars for these leases. They were sending their kids to private school. They were buying clothes from Paris. They were driving, you know, brand new cars. So their town went from a typical Native American reservation to a almost a mini city in itself. So that was very interesting. Um, now, wherever you have money, you get scam artists. So there was a slew of, you know, white men that came in and married the Osage women. I don't know if it went the other way around. Like, I don't know if there was a slew of white women that came in and married the ostrich men. They didn't really talk about that. But there were a lot of white men that came in and married the women. Um, also, the government would appoint guardians if over the um, rich Native American. So, say you were a full-blooded ostrich uh, member of the ostrich tribe, and you had all this money. They thought you couldn't handle your money. So, they would appoint, normally a white man, to handle your money. If you're more like half Native American, Native, you know, Osage, they might not do that. So it goes, you know, it just goes into and tells you the the level of racism during that time. Um, so anyway, back to the scam artist. There, the the book kind of focused on one family in particular, one woman in particular, Molly Burkhart, who did marry a white man, and her sisters start dying. Her mom dies. She is getting very sick. So, and this isn't unusual in the tribe. They had a death rate nearly double what the general population in America at that time, um, their death rate. So it was very strange. It was very curious. She was very scared. She didn't know what was going on. Um, and the local law enforcement just really didn't want any part of it. They didn't care. So I think there was an attorney that was a member of the tribe, um, I think half, and he ended up going to Washington and really advocating on behalf of the tribe about what was going on there, about all the deaths, about the money being stolen. And he was able to get 
federal agents to come out and investigate. And this was the beginning of the FBI. Um, it was J. Ed Edgar Hoover coming in, the very birth of the FBI. I mean, the agents weren't even allowed to carry guns. So that tells you how far back in time this was. Um, and they ended up investigating and figuring out who was behind it. And I won't give that away. But um, it was it was a very interesting twists and turns and until so you finally figured out what it was. But whenever you have a large amount of money like that, you're going to get people coming in trying to scam you. And horribly, in their case kill you. And there was actually a pair of doctors in on it that say you needed diabetes medication. They were actually shooting you up with low dose, doses of poison um, in order to make your death less suspicious, less obvious. So that's kind of the general gist of the book. What I liked about it, I actually like the murder mystery plot of it. I don't like mysteries, don't like nonfiction, but I like this. So whether it was the writer or the subject matter, it was just really good. The descriptions of the Osage tribe, their culture, were really fascinating. And on the flip side of the coin, the descriptions of how they treated these Native Americans were just horrifying. And you know, it, it, it was fascinating in itself. I couldn't believe it, you know, sitting here in 2018, what we thought of them at that time. Um, what I didn't like, there was a big section in the middle that was about the FBI and the birth of the FBI. That was really boring. Sorry, it was boring. And there's also a large cast of characters, so sometimes that's a little confusing in books. Um, but other than that, I thought it was excellent. I would give it four out of five. If you're interested in nonfiction, or even if you're not, because I'm not, and I like the book, you might want to pick it up. If you're interested in history, especially Native American history, you might want to pick it up. Um, and if you're interested in the American West, because even in the 20s, there was a lot of wild, wild west going on. Um, it was pretty interesting to read that, it, you know, you don't, you think of the wild, wild west in like the 1800s, I would think, but this, it was still a little bit like that in this time. So that's kind of interesting. Um, there's, there was supposed to be a movie coming out by Martin Scorsese with Leonardo DiCaprio playing the role. I found that on the internet. They said it was supposed to start shooting spring of 2018. I have heard nothing else about it. I kind of looked around to see anything else. I don't know if they're doing it or not but might be interesting to check it out. So anyway, that's my review of Killers of the Flower Moon. Again, David Gran, get it. I'm also, my next book club book selection is Beneath the Scarlet Sky by Mark Sullivan. My mom has already read it and she said it was great. She couldn't put it down. So um, I'm interested, I'm only on page 86 and it's got over 500 pages. So I don't think I'll be able to read this in time for next week. So maybe I'll do you know, another book I've read recently next week. Um, but so far I like it. So that'll probably come up in the next couple weeks as a feature. So that was my first video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope, hope, hope that you come back. If there is a book you're interested in, if you want to know if I've read it, or maybe I will read it. If you suggest it, drop it in the comments and I will read every single one. I promise until next week. Cheers.